there is just nothing better than a good topwater bite. And no matter where you live in the country, topwater season is here. But one of the most frustrating things about fishing a topwater is that you can lose and miss a lot of fish while throwing a topwater. And it's extremely aggravating when you see something big come up there and nail that bait, and then you lose that fish. So today I'm gonna talk about five different tricks that will really help you to start landing more fish that come up there and hit your bait. So stay tuned, it's gonna be a good one. This video is brought to you by sportsmansoutfitters.com. Right now, Sportsman's Outfitters is running a huge Memorial Day sale, and there's only about one day left in this sale. You can save a lot of money on some of your favorite lures. And a real special deal that they are doing right now, if you buy one Arc Lancer Pro Series rod, you can get the second rod for just $19. That is a $100 rod for just 19 bucks. You literally can't beat that. So if you guys wanna take advantage of this sale and save some money, click those links down below in the description and you're greatly gonna help support the Bass Fishing HQ channel. If you listen to a ton of guys and how they got hooked on bass fishing, a lot of them are gonna talk about fishing a top water for the first time and seeing a bass come up there and just nail that bait. And it's something that is, it's truly exciting and it's a little bit addicting. For me as a tournament fisherman, I have always loved to fish a top water because they tend to get a bigger than average bite, which is what I want to do when I'm fishing a tournament. I want to catch a bigger than average fish. But if you do not have the right system from your hooks to your top water to your line to your rod and everything, you're going to lose a lot of fish on a top water. So today I want to give you five different tricks that will really help you to start landing more fish on top. Now the first trick is actually a little bit more of a tip and this is keep your colors simple. I think so many anglers spend way too much time in the bottom of their boat, or if you are a bank angler, you spend it digging through your backpack and your boxes to try to find that perfect color lure that you think is going to help you catch a lot more fish. Now, with a topwater bait, one thing you have to realize is that the bass are only going to be seeing the bottom of that bait, first of all. And second of all, there's really only four main shades that I'm going to use pretty much any time that I throw a top water. The first shade is what I would call a shad shade, and this is any shad colored bait. For instance, this is a little bit more white in color. This is a little bit more bone in color. Now, I'm gonna lump these into the same category because if you know anything about the way a bass can actually see, they've done studies on this, it's hard for them to decipher sometimes between the color chartreuse and white. Okay, so something that is bone colored versus something that is white like this on the belly, those bass are not gonna notice the difference. So I lump bone colors and anything shad colored into this same category. And I'm gonna throw these anytime the bass are feeding heavily on threadfin shad or gizzard shad. The next shade are translucent colored topwater baits. And when I say translucent, I mean that you can see through the bait. Now, I fish these translucent colors a ton because I fish in a lot of clear water situations. And that is what I like these baits for. In clear water, you don't always want the bass to get a good look at that bait. If they get too good of a look at it, they're gonna know that that thing is not real. So a translucent color that they can't see as well, they more or less just see the commotion on top, they're gonna hit that a lot better in that clear water. Now the next shade is a dark shade. For instance, this is a black top water, and I primarily use a dark shade like this when I'm fishing in overcast conditions. If it is a really dark out or even early in the morning, that is when I like to fish a dark colored bait like this. Now there is one other situation I like and that is for smallmouth. For some reason, smallmouth love black. No matter if it's sunny, if it's cloudy, they just like that black in color. And so that's another time that I will pick up a black or a dark colored bait. Now the last shade that I will throw is some sort of chrome colored or something that is extremely flashy. And a lot of times I'm gonna throw this when I'm trying to draw the fish up from a little bit deeper water. If I know that those fish are sitting, you know, 10 foot or more from the surface, that is what I'm going to use kind of a chrome or shiny colored bait because that sun will actually hit off that chrome and it will send a little bit of a light flash in the water, which helps those bass to kind of hone in on that bait from deeper water. So when I'm fishing, especially in the Carolinas where those fish feed on blueback herring, that is what I'm gonna fish, a chrome color bait. Now the only other color that is a little bit different that I will 
throw from time to time is something that I would consider to be bluegill colored. And all I'm really looking for is something that has a little bit of orange on the belly like this one here. Now the second trick that will help you catch more fish on topwaters is knowing when to use a feathered treble hook. There was a point for me where no matter what, I would always throw a feathered treble hook on my topwater baits. And for the most part, I still do. I always start with a feathered treble hook, but I have found that there are times where you do not want to throw a feather on the back of your top water. Now, before I started throwing feathered treble hooks, there were certain days that I would go out fishing a top water that those fish would come up and hit that bait and I would miss a lot of those fish. And I found that simply adding a feather would greatly help increase my hookup ratio. For whatever reason, those fish either use it as a target or it just entice those fish enough that they would commit better to that bait. But one thing that I have found over just fishing a topwater a lot over the years is that sometimes the bass will use this too much of a target. And what I mean by is if you're fishing a topwater and you're catching a lot of fish, but they're all hooked on that back hook, like you, you hook into that bass and it only has the back hook, the problem with that is that when a bass comes up and jumps, if it only has the back hook, it can swing that topwater bait a lot. And that topwater bait going side to side can actually make you lose a lot of fish. So if you happen to notice that you're catching a lot of fish on that back feathered treble, try actually taking that feather off of there and just putting a standard hook on the back and just see how the bass start hitting that bait. I have seen several times where the bass go from actually hitting that feather to actually committing to more of the front of the bait. And typically when they get the front hooks, they will actually get a couple of other treble hooks. And those fish you don't tend to lose as much as the ones that have that back treble hook. Now, the third trick to catching more fish on a topwater, in my opinion, this is actually actually what I would define as a game changer, something that can really help you to catch a lot more of those fish that bite, and that is adding a double split ring to your top water baits. Now, this is a trick that I actually learned from Frank Scalish on Bass Talk Live, so I wanna make sure that I give them credit for this, but me and my buddy, we were both listening to this podcast. We heard about this double split ring, and to be honest, when I first heard it, I thought, man, I don't know that that's going to make that much of a difference. Well, me and my buddy, we went out fishing in a certain tournament. We were both throwing the exact same topwater bait. He was throwing the double split rings and I wasn't. And needless to say, the first two fish that blew up on his bait that day, he caught both of them and they were really good fish. The first two fish that hit my bait that day, I missed both of them, okay? And so I immediately switched over to the double split ring rig I landed every single fish that bit the rest of the day. Now, what that double split ring does is it makes that hook actually hang down a little bit further. And it also allows that hook to have a lot more movement, which helps you to land more fish and helps them to not throw it as easily. So I know it may seem a little bit goofy, but learn from my mistakes and throw that double split ring, especially if you have fish missing the bait. Now the fourth topwater trick is really knowing when to use a loud bait and when to use a silent bait. And this is something that I find to be extremely important when topwater fishing. If I'm out there fishing a topwater and I have fish missing the bait for whatever reason, a lot of times I'm going to change the sound of a bait before I actually change the color of the bait. A lot of times I feel like I know what color the bass are gonna hit. And sometimes there are days where having a, a really loud bait is just too much for the fish. This happens a lot when I'm fishing on really calm days, but bass will still come up there and hit top waters on a calm day. So switching over to a bait that is silent, this is an Evergreen JT-115. It is my favorite silent bait. It literally has no rattles at all in it. But switching over to a bait like this on those calm days, I'm telling you, it can be the difference between catching and hooking fish and not. The fifth topwater tip comes down to the setup in which you throw a topwater with. And this is extremely important to get right because this is going to be 
the biggest difference between you losing fish and you landing fish. And specifically, I wanna talk about your line and rod setup because there are two main lines that you can throw topwaters with. You can throw them with monofilament and you can throw them with braided line. You don't wanna use fluorocarbon line because fluorocarbon sinks and it will affect the action of your bait. When it comes down to mono and braid, they are two very different types of line. Mono has a lot of stretch, braid has zero stretch. You wanna match the rod that you're using with the line that you're using. If I am using monofilament that, that has a ton of stretch and I make a, a 30 or 40 yard cast, a 100 foot cast and a bass hits that bait, when I go to set the hook, that line is gonna stretch a lot. So I tend to want a longer rod, something that is over seven foot, three inches in length. And I also want something that is more of a medium heavy power. If you're using too short or too limber of a rod with that mono, on that long hook set, you might not even get a hook in that fish and that's gonna cause you to lose a lot of fish. Now on the flip side, if you are using braided line, you don't wanna use too heavy of a rod because you will actually rip those hooks out of that fish. I like to use braided line and I use a seven foot, two inch rod that is a medium power rod. That braid has zero stretch. So when that fish hits way out there, it's almost like he is really close to the boat because that line has zero stretch. So you can use a softer rod because you're using that braid that has zero stretch. Now in both situations, no matter what, I still want to use a parabolic bending rod, a more moderate action when it comes to that rod because that's also going to help me to keep those fish pegged. Now the one top water that this really doesn't apply to is when you are fishing a frog and I didn't talk real specifically about a frog in this video because I did a whole video all about frogs right here and in this video I'm going to show you seven hacks that actually help you to catch a ton more fish with a frog so it's not so much of a frustrating bait to throw. So if you guys enjoyed this video you're going to like this one. Also don't forget to check out those deals at Sportsman's Outfitters. I'll see you in the next one.